Tonight, we're returning to The Conjurer's Magazine, or Magical and Physiognomical Mirror, for a short episode. This is a very old magazine published in London. Um, This issue is from March of 1792. This magazine covers pretty much anything you can think of having to do with the supernatural and the paranormal. And in this particular issue, on page 351, there's a set of instructions for how to do weird things. I don't know how else to describe it. That's what's going on. Um, So you may want to take notes during this episode, because some of these projects, or whatever you want to call them, sound kind of interesting. Here we go. An artificial spider which moves by electricity. Take a bit of burnt cork as big as a pea, give it the shape of a spider, and make its legs with threads of hemp. Put a grain of lead in the cork to give it some weight, then hang this artificial spider by a bit of gray sewing silk that is not twisted, between two bodies, the one electrified and the other not, or between two bodies endowed with different electricities. It will go and come between these two bodies, and the movement of the legs will be seen as plain as if it were a living spider. This artificial spider, if well made, will astonish those who see it move so naturally. To extinguish two wax candles, and light two others, distant about three feet, by the firing of a pistol, loaded with powder, as usual. Nothing is more simple than the operation which produces this supernatural effect. First, get some whole wax candles and let them be recently snuffed. Second, you are to put in the middle of the wick of those candles, to be lighted, about the size of a millet grain of phosphorus, to do which, divide the wick with a pin or a toothpick, Then place yourself at five or six feet distance from them and fire your pistol at the lighted candles, which will be extinguished by the powder, whilst it will make the phosphorus take fire, which will light the other two. You may likewise light a wax candle, on the wick of which phosphorus has been applied, according to the foregoing method, by means of a sword well heated in a near room. You need only present the point of the sword to the wick of the candle, commanding it to light." Nota bene. Observe that you are not to touch the phosphorus with your fingers, but take the point of a knife or a pair of small pincers. You must take care also that the wick of the candle is cold before you put the phosphorus to it. Without this precaution, it would take fire immediately. To compose a red color imitating the color of blood. This liquor or fluid furnishes the entertaining means of making it known to a company the person who is most addicted to love. Preparation of the liquor. Cut in several small chips a piece of Pernambuco wood, put them in a large glass full of good white wine vinegar, add to it a bit of common white alum of the size of a small nut, make the whole simmer over a gentle fire for half an hour, in a new earthen pot or pipkin, taking care to stir this composition in order to prevent it from boiling over while on the fire. When it is taken from the fire, let it cool and strain it through a piece of linen, then pour it into a bottle of clear glass. You must make all these preparations beforehand, as these experiments are only agreeable when performed with quickness. You will find it necessary to provide yourself with a tube of clear glass about 15 or 18 inches long, about the thickness of a wax candle, taking care to have it stopped at one end. When you present yourself before a company, in order to perform this experiment, you are to carry the tube in your pocket, and holding the file in your hand, you are to say, Ladies and gentlemen, here is a file containing liquid blood. I hope to make you know by it the person most addicted to love in the company. Please to observe that I pour a little of this liquor in this tube, as you might imagine that this liquor, like that put in thermometers, may rise by dilating itself when exposed to heat, and consequently the pressure of the hand will suffice to produce this effect, and it will condense by rarefying when exposed to cold. 
I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, it is not the case. This liquor differs entirely from that put in thermometers, and you may easily be convinced of it before I make the experiment I promised you. You may put it near the heat of a candle, and even that of a fire, without any degree of heat making it rise in the least. But by a peculiar and sympathetic virtue you will see it boil when the tube is touched by a person of an amorous disposition. Then take out of your pocket a little potash. Keep it in the interior part of the hand that holds the tube at the top, as if you wanted to keep it shut. And as soon as the person you wish to make pass for the most amorous in the company takes the lowest part of the tube in his hand, you are to let fall dexterously a little of the potash in it, and you will see the liquor boil and rise to the top of the tube, to the great astonishment of the spectators. To prepare a room in such a manner that any person entering with a lighted candle will think himself surrounded with fire. Take a pretty large quantity of brandy, put it in a bowl, and set it on the fire, the fire must be slow, to receive heat enough to boil it gently up. Into the brandy put some campfire cut in little bits, which will soon dissolve, and when all is dissolved, close both windows and doors, let the brandy boil, and evaporate. By this the room or closet will be filled with subtle spirits, which as soon as a candle is brought into the room will be lighted, and seem as if all was on fire. Dissolve some perfume in the brandy, and the flame will be attended with an agreeable smell." to spot a white horse with black spots. Take litharge, three ounces, and quicklime, six ounces. Beat them fine and mix them together. Put the mixture in a pan and pour a sharp lee over it. Then boil it, and you will have a fat substance swim at top, which take and with it anoint the horse in such places as you design to be black, and it will turn that color immediately. It has the same effect in changing hair that is red into black, with only this difference. You are to take an equal quantity of lime and litharge, and instead of boiling it with lee, take only fresh water. What swims at top is fit for use and will answer your expectation, and what hairs you anoint at night will be black next morning. To make a stone which, being wetted, produces fire. Take quicklime, saltpeter, Tutia Alexandrina and calament of equal quantities, live sulfur and campfire of each two parts. Beat and sift them through a fine sieve. Then put the powder in a new linen cloth, tie it close, put it in a crucible, cover it with another crucible, mouth to mouth, bind, and lute them well together. Then set them in the sun to dry. When dry, the powder will be yellow. Then put the crucible in a potter's furnace, and when cold again, take it out, and you will find the powder altered into the substance of a brick. This you may form into less proportions, and when you have occasion to light a candle or fire, wet part of it with a little water, or your own spittle, and it will instantly flame, and when you have lighted, blow it out again, as you would a candle. To prepare a philosophical tree in a glass. Take the finest silver, one ounce aqua fortis, and mercury of each four ounces. In this dissolve your silver. And after you have put it over a pint of water, close your phial, and you will see a fine tree spring forth in branches, which will increase and grow thicker every day. To dapple a horse. Take in the spring the large buds of young oak trees, Mix them among the horse's provender, and give it him three or four times to eat, and he will be dappled, and continue so for a whole year. The buds of young elm trees will have the same effect. To put a candle under water alight without its going out. As much has been said about the diving bell, this simple trick may serve in some degree to elucidate that contrivance, as it is certainly done on the same principle. Take a glass... And fastening a small bit of wood across the mouth, stick thereon a bit of candle lighted, and with a steady hand bring the glass to the surface of the water, then push it carefully down, and you may see the candle burn under the water, and may bring it up again alight, 
and in the same manner you may put a handkerchief rolled tight together, and it will not be wet. The principal art in doing this trick consists in the nicety of bringing the mouth of the glass exactly even with the surface of the water, for if you put it the least on one side, the wet will get in, and consequently will put the candle out or wet the handkerchief so that a nice eye and steady hand are absolutely necessary for this performance. And that's all the tricks that we've learned today. There's a much longer section about card tricks and then uh, secrets of cribbage. And I see now that this is all part of a longer section called philosophical and ingenious amusements. But... I'm not going to read the card or cribbage tricks. I think we've got enough to work with so far. Uh, One other slight thing I want to mention is that in a couple of these tricks, I was using the word campfire, and it may sound like I'm saying campfire, but it's spelled C-A-M-P-H-I-R-E, and apparently that is an archaic term for the henna plant. So I thought that was worth mentioning. I hope you've learned something. Um, You'll want to be careful if you try the uh, uh, the pistol and candle trick. Um, If you're going to be messing around with phosphorus and a loaded pistol, you should know what you're doing. The kids will need adult supervision if they're going to do that one. Um, But we'll probably come back to this magazine again because it's a lot of fun and there's just tons of material to cover. So, um, we'll be back and tune in next time.